the combat is uh, not the best. Like it's again, I'm I. You get to bitch slap people. What are you talking about? <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Matt. Welcome to the Real Gamer School Podcast. This week I'm joined by Cameron. Hey. And Alex. Ooh, that's me. Here at Real Gamer School, we like to discuss all things Xbox, achievements, and savagely rejecting a journey with Cameron. This week we talk about platform vania mania, shooting our mouths off, and putting my phone through windows. But first, here's the song of the week. Well, I know just what I'm playing tonight. It's taking over my life like a blight. I'm so bored, I'm drifting off in my chair. And I'm wondering how these achievements are fair. Grinds to the left of me, boosting to the right. Here I am, stuck playing Gears of War 2. Yes, I'm stuck playing Gears of War 2. Alright, nice sort of short one there that I wrote in the last five minutes. Uh, Any ideas, guys? Cameron? Uh, Stuck in the middle of you. Okay, yep, that is the title. Some artist. Okay, some artist. Yeah, no, unfortunately, I don't know if I can accept some artist. Uh, Alex, any ideas? You wrote that yourself, you say? I, I mean, I think that's really got potential to go big. I've got no idea who popularized it. It was some pop song. Yeah, it was uh, Steel, Steeler's Wheel. Oh, okay. Uh, which is their, this, it's their one. Well, I, basically, their one hit wonder. They had a couple other decent songs, but obviously, that's the one everyone knows. All right, well, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, Alex, thanks for thanks for joining us again. Always a pleasure. And uh, Cameron, yeah, you showed up. Good job. Um, Yay. I, 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 sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, you're, you're right. You're right. I need to be nice to Cameron this episode. Thank, thank you, Alison, for reminding me. I get, I get one every, like, I, I get, like, a quarter of one every three months, yeah? Yeah, pretty much. All right. Um with 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 the nice ne- the niceties out of the way, let's get into the housekeeping. So, Discord, discord.io slash real gamer score. If you don't know what a Discord is, Discord is basically a big chat room where all of our community hang out. We talk about video games, we talk about memes. A uh, great place to we are you know sort of looking for group channel if you're trying to put together a boosting session or you need to help some help with the game. It's really helpful when you're trying to get a partner for Journey to the Savage Planet and nobody replies to you. <laughs> So you just oh, wow. play it solo. What are you Don't talking you, about? What are you talking about? You already okay. The, the, we will get to that. Okay, <laughs> but uh, come on, yeah, Mister Mister Kiku said that uh, he absolutely under no circumstances would play that with you, right? Isn't that what he was? He, he, no, he, no, no, no. Nobody <laughs> helps me. Look, playing. there's a simple I, okay, reason. I'm, 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 I'm going to Discord. There's one hour every three months when people are nice to you, and yesterday wasn't that one hour. No, no, it's true. Exactly, yeah. Like, it's, I think that the yeah, like I, I always find manage to find people on there that are helpful. I'm sure most of our other community is there. So maybe Cameron, you just need to think about what the common, the, what the, the common variable here is that that might be different. But um, mm-hmm. to but anyone outside of... into this podcast, if you also would like to reject Cameron, come join our Discord. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I've, I'll, I'll make a whole new channel that you can't get into. Don't worry about it. Um, okay. But, but speaking of channels, so we have our podcast channel where you can talk about the show. We've got our general chat where we just sort of chat shit. Um, we've got a meme channel, which has been popping off. Uh, and we, we also have um, our, it's where we have our questions. So we have a place where you can ask questions of the show that we answer. We got a pretty good one this week. Uh, and we've also got the word challenge. So uh, last week we announced the winner of that. We're going to be coming up with a new one probably maybe next week. I've got, got to talk to Kirby about what the next game's going to be. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking forward just to seeing uh, to seeing everyone's uh, everyone's guesses and what horrible clues uh, Kirby comes up with. Uh, the word challenge, basically, for those who don't know, uh, Kirby, uh, one of the former hosts, will select a game and basically uh, put it into a bot, and everyone has to put guesses into the channel. And if you guess the right game, then you win ten bucks. Uh, and each week, we're going to release a clue for the game. Uh, and essentially, if no one gets it, it'll increase the price to 20, 30, 40. You guys are know, know how math works. Uh, until someone gets it. And the clues tend to be ridiculously unhelpful uh, in a lot of cases until basically we get to like the fourth week and Cameron's like, uh, sorry, uh, Kirby's like, Ugh, just here's, here's basically the answer. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have a new one for you uh, for next week. 
Uh, we've also got our uh, Champs Discord uh, for uh, channel for our Patreons. Uh, if you don't know Patreon, it's patreon.com slash realgamerscore. It's basically a place where you can give us some money to help run the show, helps pay for those competitions, server costs, uh, equipment, things like that. Uh, we really, really appreciate our Patreons. Uh, and so we, we've got a little bit, we've got a, a sort of exclusive channel for their, them where we put all of our sort of uh, test content, like uh, Lights, Camera, and Action, which is our uh, movie reviewing podcast that we've started. Uh, we that, talk that, about the hopefully the plan to start a Patreon night, movie night? <clears throat> yeah, sure, go for it. Um, <clears throat> so I get, <clears throat> oh jeez, my voice has just gone so fucking croaky. Sorry. Uh, don't worry, uh, but I'll, I'll let all of this out, it'll be fine. Yeah, cool. So pretty much we would we want to find out from you guys, uh, especially the Patreons, what night or what time would work best for you if we all wanted to do like a Netflix uh, watch party. Pick one yeah, of the most horrible video game movies known to man and just all watch it and criticize the fuck out of it together. Yeah, so, so we'll probably still do our podcast, but we do have to watch the movies at some stage. So we thought, why not invite some of you guys to watch them with us? And, you know, Misery loves company. So... Again, there's definitely some logistical challenges because your Cameron's in Australia, I'm here in New Zealand, uh, and and Al- Alex is in the UK, and then of course all of our other patrons are all over the place. So we'll try and figure out something that works. Maybe we'll record it if we can. We'll you know you can play it like a like a um, director's commentary. Uh, but we'll, again, we'll we'll sort of see what form that takes. But if you have guys have any ideas or you want some suggestions, chuck them in the Discord. It's the best place to get a hold of us. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's straight straight into the news. Cameron, Mr. Newsmaster, what have you found for us this week? All right, so I've got a lot of small stuff. Um, pretty much starting off that EA Play would be joining Xbox Game Pass as of today, which is uh, pretty much the <laughs> Friday before the podcast goes out. So pretty much when you're hearing this, uh, EA Play will be part of Xbox Game Pass. Game Pass for PC. For PC, sorry. So yeah, this was so... originally announced alongside the Xbox Series X and X launch but for whatever reason, got delayed and only has just launched now in March. Yeah, that seems a bit interesting. I wonder why. Uh, I mean, like, I'm, I'm happy for it because it means that, you know, you'll have access to a bunch of EA games that are in the vault. I'm wondering um, if it's con- <clears throat> contractual uh, obligations or something along those lines, but mm, can't think maybe. of anything else using EA access. Mm. There's also a slightly weird way of like, this uh, happening. In the you know when we got EA Play into Xbox, it's all completely seamless, and we all just have this library section to download mm-hmm. games. Uh, sadly, it's a great deal still, but for EA Play on PC, basically we've all got access to the EA launcher from which we can install and play the games as normal with no achievements and no otherwise integration into the Microsoft stuff, which is a shame. But it's all basically mm-hmm. free, so that's all the complaining you'll get from me. You know how fucking happy I would have been if Timefall 2 had got a PC stack. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I would have been, been right fucking on it. ecstatic. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think that... I, I guess it comes probably, probably back to the whole... Was it um, UDP? Is, is that the... Um, no, what is it? UWP or what, whatever is the Windows um, a, a sort of format that they use for a lot of their uh, Xbox um, integrated uh, mm. achievement stuff. I imagine they probably don't want to put in the work on the PC games to make them either compatible or have that sort of Xbox Live support where they don't already. Whereas, obviously, on the Xbox, EA games still have to have all the Xbox Live integration no matter what. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that that's that extra extra step to add in there. I mean, not to say that they won't do stuff like that in the future, I suppose, uh, for games going forward. But we, again, we're talking about like back catalogue of things like yeah, Titanfall 2, uh, Need, Need for Speed stuff, some of the Star Wars yeah. games... Uh, Battlefield, Command and Conquer. Uh, I'd be interested to see, like, you know, with EA Play, is this going to be a lot of new titles going forward? How 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 long are we going to wait for them? I think with the squadrons, I think was getting added. Yeah, uh, squadrons was getting added this month. I think actually, I think it was today or something, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was something like that. Yeah, um, I, I I want to say the nineteenth, but I'm not entirely sure on that. Hmm. I mean, are you guys going to play any of this stuff without achievement lists? I mean, like Squadrons, I'm interested in. But um, you can play it on a console. But I, I, mean, I, I prefer to play on, on console gonna... anyway, so it's a bit of a moot point. Because for me, I've got a oh. laptop on the one hand versus a Series X on the other. I'm going to take, and it's a normal laptop, it's not a gaming one. So of course I'm going to take the Series X. Gotcha. 
Uh, plus also, I'll admit, the prevalence of console commands and things. If you love that, go for it. But if I'm going to play a game in a regular style, I'd rather have it done on the Xbox where nobody's questioning me. <laughs> fair, yeah. fair. It's just not worth the dramas. <laughs> I can understand that. Um, yeah, I was going to say the same thing with this kind of stuff. Um, I honestly really wish they had some kind of new achievement support, but sadly that's not the case. Um, it's just one of those things that just, like, it's a great feature. It's absolutely amazing for, you know, the standard gamer that isn't going to be weighed down by achievements and that kind of stuff, so... Yeah, again, the, um, the Xbox Game Pass value just keeps going up, right? The interesting thing for me is how long do we think EA Play is going to stay in Game Pass? Is this going to be a permanent fixture? Or is it going to be something that is strictly a year contract and then it's, it's out? I I'm sure they've got permanent. some sort of agreement in there. I, I mean, th- there would be an exit yeah. clause, right? EA would have an out because they're sensible and they're writing a contract. You always give yourselves a great clause. But what they're getting out of it, essentially they tried to go it alone and they just worked within the subscriber numbers. By jumping into Game Pass, they've got an amazing library in there. Seriously, everybody check it out. And Titanfall 2, we've already mentioned, is brilliant. At some point in a year's time, I'm sure the new Mass Effect remaster will go in there. You know, there are brilliant games there. Mm-hmm. But inside Game Pass, everybody plays them and everybody buys the DLC. And this is fantastic for EA. It grows the community. That means the multiplayer stays alive. That means the games are viable. You know, this is the reason they've come into Game Pass. It's not because Microsoft is paying them rent for a year, although I'm sure there's some money involved. It's because they can sell the DLC. They can get players into the games, and those reasons will keep on giving. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that attach rate is really what it's all about when it comes to when it, when it comes to especially EA and and places like Activision and I mean actually the majority of, of big developers and publishers these days right is it's it's really about getting those uh, that long tail and those uh, after after the sort of first initial sales uh, trying to get those DLC sales which you know for better or worse I suppose is going to be the way going forward right the games are going to be quote unquote free uh, and it's going to be everything else on top of it and it just might be the way games become as the games as a service becomes even more literal I, mean, I was yes, thinking about no. that yesterday oh, because, God. like, uh, yeah, I was gonna say I was thinking about that yesterday because you think ten years ago, like, when were you ever going to get a free game? Yeah, hmm. it's true. It's true. I mean, like, I, people had pitched the idea of Netflix for games or whatever, right? But it was like again, pie in the sky. Everyone was like, they'll never do that. They'd lose so much money. We 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 think back to our childhood though. The problems we were experiencing were like our brother deleted our save file on our PS2, that kind of stuff, and now we're dealing with uh, like pretty much a culture where we have so much to play we are spoiled for choice like playstation um just announced that they will get sorry sony just announced that playstation were getting t for uh 10 free games next month i believe with horizon zero dawn uh complete edition leading Mm -hmm. the way beforehand like it's crazy um and like at the same time i think about stuff like this we've just had bethesda being bought Yep. We've had EA Access um, pretty much in some form or another, whether it be on console or on PC now, being in since the Series X launch. I would not be surprised if we see something like a Ubisoft uh, next. Yeah. Or so, even um, even like another big purchase like maybe Square Enix. Yeah, I mean, again, in terms of purchases, there's been rumors about, you know, Konami, Sega, and Square Enix have been the three. I don't I don't think Square Enix is ever going to happen at this stage, uh, especially with their, at least not by Microsoft. They have their too tight net with Sony in terms of exclusivity, uh, especially on, like, Final Fantasy franchise, for example. But saying that at the same time, like, you think 10 years ago, you would not, you'd be that hard to come by to find Final Fantasy on Xbox. Like, it was never going to happen yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, ten years ago, maybe, but sure. Yeah, I, I, I can, I can see that. Yeah, that's, it's a good point. But again, it's, yeah. But uh, there's a big difference between an exclusive game, right, and and purchasing a whole company. And Square Enix is worth still quite a bit of money. Hmm. Um, but yeah, sorry, Alex. So what, what was the point you were going to make there? So I was going to say, with games as a service, it's definitely more of a thing thanks to Game Pass. Game Pass really helps those. But at the same time, Game Pass is enabling the experiments, especially within Microsoft, because Microsoft's game studios are full on buying into it. So, personally, 
like I'm not really a games as a service person. Like they're brilliant experiences, they're not so much for me. But I'm still over the moon with Game Pass because as well as the games for service that are blowing up on it, you've also got just the little micro stuff, the sort of indie type games that they're just throwing out on there. And there's brilliant short twenty hour morsels of single player content that actually might not have been green lighted without or certainly not at this yeah. level of budget without Game Pass. So I think it really digs into both of those angles. It's just they're saying anything that gets people in the deal and playing stuff in Game Pass, talking about it and advocating it to their friends, will green like that. And that's amazing. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, and we'll talk about one of the games when I guess to what I've been playing this week, but it's uh, there, is, there have been quite a few titles that I've been like, oh, that's that's really interesting. And now obviously I'm not buying games or trying not to uh, last year and this year. But Game Pass has sort of been the saving grace of having still having some level of, you know, I'm not spending money on it, but I get to play some of this new stuff or new-ish stuff or experiences that I haven't, you know, I don't have my backlog, so I don't suffer that much burnout of trying to just slog through old games. I can actually, you know, play some play some of the, the smaller small and smaller titles mm. rather than the big AAA stuff that I don't really usually care about all that much. It's it's so good to explore like a new concept that might only be like a five to ten hour game that costs you thirty dollars that you might not have otherwise touched unless it hit a sale. Yeah, exactly. And and then it, with the sales these days, it's so hard to even get into that because you've got like you know five dollar out of likers and and you know uh, other crap that just gets thrown at you that just everything gets lost in the sales. It's so hard to find quality and like I don't blame them. It's it's mm. like it, Game Pass is and we've talked about this before, but Game Pass is is a great service, but it's also a great talking point and a great advertising avenue to mm. say, to, to put yourself outside of, of of all this other stuff that comes out on a daily basis to say, oh yeah, we're coming out straight into Game Pass. You can play it day one. You don't have to spend any money. Super low barrier to entry. Also, you know, Microsoft's going to put our, put our, you know, game icon as the try Game Pass for a dollar thingamajig for the next like week. I mean, usually you get a double hit because that's definitely the big moment when you come into Game Pass. Of course, we've seen in the last week or so, the other big moment is when you're leaving Game Pass. And there are fantastic games like Journey to the Savage Planet, which got the attention they deserved the first time around, but some people slept on it for whatever reason, including me. Uh, and now it's coming back around again. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Is... And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that game because we've been playing it, that's for sure. That is, that is called Valor King. He owns the term. <laughs> Please be careful in its use. We may have to pay royalties. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll 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 badger him when we finally get him on the show about it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to add to that? I think it's it's interesting, um, but we are trying to keep these bite size. Yeah, yeah. Move on. Um, I mean, move on. But yeah, pretty pretty good for the average gamer. Yeah. Um. All right. So, leading into the next story, Windows Phone. He did it. Yes. The annoying little prick did it. Good job, Kiku. Congratulations, mate. You, 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 you squeaky wheel. You've proven the adage time and time again. It, it really does get the oil. You've done it. And you know so what? We should, as well uh, to Microsoft for actually some for some reason putting the budget into this. I guess it's a community yeah, play. Sucks. I honestly, I don't see how it makes sense for Microsoft, but I'm so glad they think it does. I'm, I'm hoping that it's just like someone went into it, it's like oh I need to kick the server and they, they they dug it out and they're like oh yeah someone someone spilled coffee on it so we need to clean it up a bit turn it back on and suddenly everything's fine mm. that that's how I imagine that that works I'm, I'm, you know you know you know me infrastructure uh, but uh, Cameron do you want to do you want to go through what the what's been right. happening I'm just I'm just trying to find the thing that he sent me but all right so pretty much last year achievements on Windows Phone. Uh, pretty much just stopped working pretty much altogether. Um, there was numerous reports just of certain things that just would no longer sync to servers um, and a lot of gamer score missing from people's totals. It finally got fixed as of uh, well, today's recording as of yesterday. Um, I messaged Adrian in the morning um, and he pretty much he wrote back to me saying I have never jumped back out of, uh, jumped out of my bed so fast in my life and just the messages on TA, like, I mean, TA typically, there's a lot of um, just there's, negative... There's a lot of negativity, yeah. What? For no reason. Uh, go, <laughs> going, going through this thread... Shut like, up, I, Alex. 
I haven't I haven't <laughs> seen so much positivity in a long time, and it's like quite rewarding to see. And at the same time, like you think as a community, uh, like I've got to say, like Ad- uh, Adrian um, and a few other people that I'm trying to find the list so I can give everybody a shout out, but they essentially stopped 200 to 300 games from getting permanent discontinues. Yeah. Which is crazy to think about in a way. Yeah. And so uh, for those who don't know, uh, Kiku and a bunch of these people were, were at the head of pushing, trying to push this narrative uh, of, of what the issue was to Microsoft through their forums. Uh, and Kiku took it a step further uh, by uh, random, well, semi-randomly messaging like half right. of TA, it sounds he, like. He, his method was, and I think he may have got to 2,000 people. He did, um, yeah. So he essentially went highest gamer score down. Um, and then, like, anybody in the community is like AHA, um, Bloody Hours, I think a few of Saws um, from the Great Valley, and just a few others, and just messaged him a very generic message, changing it pretty much every single message by one word, saying, hey, come comment on this thread. Like, even if you don't have a Windows phone, we need a race support. We need to we need to show that we're serious about Windows phone achievements, that this is a great platform for some of us, and this shouldn't go away. Yeah, and uh, so, yeah, so uh, the result of that was, uh, well, again, we will never know if this is directly what caused it, but uh, it does it does seem likely that there's this outpouring of, uh, of support for these from these people was uh, what uh, helped get uh, Microsoft's ass into gear. Uh, and uh, Kiku said he's been getting a lot of nice messages from people about this stuff. Uh, the hilarious thing is that because he messaged so many people randomly, he's actually been banned for a month for messaging back. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, Kiku, so if you guys are listening, Adrian isn't ignoring you guys. He literally cannot say anything until the mods remove his ban in like three weeks. Yeah. Just more reason to join the Discord and send a message to him there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so Mr. Young Shan, thank you very much for your help. Uh, I know I have... I've got like one Windows game phone. One, it's been one Windows phone game that I needed to finish for Mirror's Edge, and I'm going to go back and try and do it. I now now that I can sync it up and actually can can do it. But it's like it was killing me having that one sitting there, being like, "Well, I guess I'm never getting this done." Um, and who knows? Maybe I'll fall into some other ones because I'm a sucker. I he stole so many free copies that I um I guess got the license for back like two or three years ago, but um. I'm pretty sure that the testing for 7, 8, 8.1, and 10 all work. From yes, yeah, as, 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 in terms of syncing. Uh, again, it, it's still a little finicky. You probably want to be trying to use Windows 10 if you can uh, because it's, it's, it's the most stable. Uh, but again, the other ones should still work as long as you have it already. You're already logged in and have it, you know, everything installed. But um, yeah, I think that pretty much sums up. And look, I'm trying to get... Adrian's busy with uni and that at the moment, but I do want to get him on a future show just to pretty much discuss the depths of this because he's I also very... just want yeah he's, 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 he, he understands the stuff in a way that few people do yeah like he is quite honestly the biggest troll I've ever met but at the same time the most clued on with anything regarding Windows phone licensing any like for a bloody 18 19 year old he's pretty switched on when it comes to that kind of stuff yeah he's a fucking dickhead but he's our dickhead <laughs> It sounds like that was the theme of this entire successful campaign. Let's get two thousand people. Yeah, well, exactly. That's <laughs> exactly that's 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 the kind of person you need. You know, that's exactly it. <laughs> all right, uh, Karen. What have we got next? Um, all right. So talking about phones, we should pretty much say that the Xbox app on phone has achievements again. Really? I'm normally all happy and about this again. stuff, but I'm not giving Microsoft credit for this. Like they cut it, they put it back. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> this is this is more just the this is more just the PSA. Yeah. Hey, um, don't have to run dual screens anymore. You can just use your phone in your lap and look what you're actually unlocking. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, the app stuff is like massively basic. Doesn't have any filters. It's basically just the display screen. Uh, it's like it's so like. Yeah, again, again, we we all know what this is like. This should have been day and date like what why do they remove it in the first place what the fuck have they been doing why haven't they got you know console streaming to pc anymore hurry up and fix that again Ugh. like again this, that app needs a lot of work especially when i remember when you know you had the xbox console companion app and you open it and it says hey we've got a new xbox app 
you should download it now. And you download it. It's like, oh, cool. So you've taken out all the features that I use. Mm. Really appreciate that. Definitely going to stick with the old one. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, you know, good, good, good job for, uh, you know, finally getting back to the start line. Yeah. I mean, it's the only thing that I can really think of other than the gold issue over the last few months that mm. they've really, I guess, screwed up. Yeah, I mean, they've, to be fair, they've been busy buying companies and trying to get, you know, Xenomax taken care of and adding shitload of stuff to Game Pass. Yeah. Yeah, jeez. Um, pretty much going on from that, the quick just mention about the new suspend feature, which I believe is an alpha, uh, alpha testing. Essentially, on your managed queue, you can just go to suspend my game, which will take um, pretty much exit out of your background... Uh, background application of the game i guess mm-hmm. and allow your download speeds to go faster that's nice yeah i have noticed that because i think that's that's one of the things i've noticed with the series x is that uh obviously quick resume is nice right uh but it, there isn't really it doesn't seem to be a good way to stop it from happening sometimes mm. like i understand that like it puts it in you know cold storage or whatever you know and you just jump straight back into where you want but sometimes i actually want to restart the game like i want to i want yeah. a fresh restart because you know it'll drop me in it's like neverwinter for example is is online connected so when i try to jump back into the game it puts me in it and says oh and it puts me in there and sits me for a bit and then suddenly comes up with a big error code saying hey you're not connected to the server i'm like i know i'm not connected to the server you want to time me out because i haven't moved for like you know a day just yeah. restart the game just like i have to exit out and redo it so it's like yes. having i yeah you saying that completely just reminded me when I used to play Perfect Gold when I was a teenager, because it's yeah. the same. It's the same friggin' um, publisher. Yeah, yeah. Oh god, it takes me back. Yeah, yeah. So like that's that's the kind of thing. Is I think that it's it's interesting to see a suspend feature, and it'd be nice to have more options. I think is more the thing, right? Like I'd like to be able to label a game to say don't use quick resume or or close when close or whatever it needs to be. I, 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 I suspend like stuff. I don't know. I, I'd like to see more sort of a developer list, essentially, of games which it just shouldn't happen mm. with. So I don't want it to be an option. I want the game to know. Um, and you see it a true, lot true. on, you know, service type games. Forza Horizon, for example, will mess up all sorts of things if you quit resume because the time's off. But I got stung by Bloodstain the other week, which was a, Vay- a Metroidvania game leaving Game Pass. You wouldn't have yep. thought that would have a problem. But whenever I quit resume did, it couldn't leave my control room first. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I would switch games, switch back. I've noticed a few issues with that. Yeah. And I just I've noticed a few issues with basically deactivate it for those games. Yeah. Yeah. No, they 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 really should actually. Yeah. You're right. Actually, it's like the owner should not be on the users. Yeah. I I was gonna say I've yeah I've noticed a few issues just quick resuming where controller just won't sync to the game and then I have to force quit the application and then restart like that, but. Yeah, it's I think very that, it's very few and far between. I'm hoping that as games go on and new ones come out, this becomes less of an issue. I think a lot of the stuff is like you know, Neverwinter is an old, old, old yeah. game by this point, and you know, Bloodstained is not a particularly new game. Nah. Uh, For, Forza Horizon, yeah, yeah, that's kind of a bit more iffy. But again, I'm hoping that going forward, we don't see this as an issue, and this is just kind of you know, legacy stuff that they have to put up with. Yeah, I think that's already been programming with this stuff in mind. It just didn't exist when these games were yeah. made. I'm amazed that the 360 yeah, yeah, games yeah, exactly. work with Quick Resume. They do. That's yeah, fine. me too. How? Me too. Get... <laughs> I'll take so, it. Tech, tech, technomagically, you know? <laughs> um, other great feature is that the new banners when exploring your full library give you like different categories. So Play Later, recently added, Leaving Soon for Game Pass, that kind of stuff. Oh, that's, that's, oh, nice. that's, that's good. good. Which is pretty neat. Not really much else to say there, just, I mean, great to have that feature. Um, pretty much is just going to say I got my Xbox wireless headset this week. Been testing that out. Um, all right. Matt, what's your opinion of it, hearing me through? Uh, you, you sound different. I think that you, you probably sound clearer, but it's a little... I think I think the mic might be a little too sensitive. Like I think it echoes a little bit, or it picks up a little bit too much ambient noise. But again, that might just be where you're sitting. Like there's a lot of different stuff that could be there. But I think that overall, um, the quality's been was has been clearer. Like I'm able to hear you better. I think for a wireless headset for 150 dollars Australian, it's a massive like, uh, you know, I've been yeah, using yeah, Razer Nari Ultimate, and just like this is much much better. Hmm. I think yeah, I'm it's, a, it's a kind of sort of mid, 
it's that, that mid tier in terms of pricing, but it's actually quite a, a high bit of quality. Because that was kind of the question when it, when it got announced, right? It was like, wow, that looks like quite a sophisticated headset with some good technology in it. Where are they going to cut the corners? Mm. Yeah. My, my view, yeah, coming in was that, well, all gaming headsets have been fairly rubbish compared to actual consumer noise cancelling headphones. And when you looked at the price as well, I yep. thought, well, maybe this will be the best gaming headset, but it'll still be rubbish. Uh, and actually, looking at the reviews coming out, uh, it's not best, best, best in class, right? If you want the best in the world to buy something else. But the, it's even in the conversation that it's within touching distance of the, the Sonys and the Boses and things, which it seems to be at that mm. price point, yeah, they've knocked it out of the park. And the one thing I'd say is it doesn't fold away nicely. So if you're planning to use it on commuting, it might not be the best commuting headset. But apart from the commuting thing and the folding thing, everything else seems to be basically right up there. And if you want something that is just about as good as anything in the world for way less money, go for it. Yeah, I, th- I think it's probably because I- I'm using my uh, so I I use my my Stealth Turtle Beach's Stealth Seven Hundreds, the wireless ones, uh, the the uh, the version ones. Uh, and I'm thinking, you know, once I finally give up the ghost, I might upgrade actually, because I've been the, the reviews have been good. I've been hearing what Cameron's saying, and uh, and yeah, it's the, he- hearing it from you as well. Actually, it's I'm I'm nearly convinced. Actually, it sounds pretty good. And then moving on, um, pretty much final story, which I mean is not really that much of a story, but Twitter just kind of blew up about it today, which I found quite hilarious. Uh, Avengers for PS4 pretty much sorry marvel's avengers announced how to migrate save data from ps4 to ps5 so i'm going to run you through and i just want to hear your opinions yeah sure so, yep to migrate your save data from ps4 to ps5 for marvel's avengers first you will launch the fully patched ps4 version and go to the save migration tab on the main menu to initiate the upload once migration is done launch the ps5 version where you'll be prompted to download the data even if you have the ps4 and the ps5 version of the same game Sorry, of the game on the same console, save migration is necessary to boot the save on the PS5 version. You'll need to download the latest update for the PS4 version so you can download the PS5 version. If you're running the version of the PS4 game that has not been updated, you won't see the save migration tab and won't be able to transfer save data. Right, so this is their patch solution that they've come up with because Smart Delivery doesn't exist on the PlayStation, basically. Yeah, yeah. I have a so, simple take on two this. Two questions. Yeah. So go on. What are your questions? I, I was, I was going to say two questions for this. First one is, um, what are some reasons why this is a bad idea, in your opinion? And then I'll voice mine. Mm-hmm. And second of all, um, smart delivery. Yeah. Like, okay. So why is this not that. a thing for them? I'm not going to give you a reason it's so, a bad oh, idea because so I think this is actually perfectly fine. Oh, don't get me wrong. Xbox is better. I think it's fine. Right? But my simple take is that this is actually the default method. It's how it's always been and it's relatively simple all things considered if you think of the Borderlands games. All they're saying is yep, right, we, exactly we patched the PS4 game so you can migrate your save data. Obviously, you need the patch version and then you click the migrate save data button. You know, yay, <laughs> all done. And then, yeah, obviously, open the game you want to play afterwards. Right, so actually, it's about as simple as it could be, and it's fine, and it's how it's always been, and it's about the best implementation we've previously had. Now, where I flip things around is actually smart delivery is awesome, right? And one of the things we've seen with this latest gen of consoles and the march of tech in general is they're just taking things which were once problems, had a sensible solution, and then making it go away. Even the solution goes away. It's just painless with smart delivery and with cloud saves. And that's brilliant. And we're spoiled and I love it, right? It doesn't mean I'm going to not Sony for using the old thing. Sony definitely need to catch up with Microsoft. And it'd be great if they had smart delivery, if they had better cloud saves, all of that stuff. But ultimately, the Avengers thing is, it's the standard. They, they've hit the standard. And Microsoft have got above and beyond. And I love it. And I'd love to see more of that from both of them. Yeah, and again, it's not it's not you know uh, Square Enix or D- Disney or Marvel's fault, right? For for having this be the solution, right? They have to work with what's available to them on the Sony platform. So this and like you said, this exactly what you were thinking with uh, Borderlands was my first thought as well. It's like I remember doing the import from the 360 to the Xbox One, bringing my characters over and that kind of stuff. Like, sure, yeah, like it works fine, and it's it's not it's it's relatively painless. But yeah, exactly. Microsoft has gone above and beyond in terms of what they've been what they've been doing with smart delivery. 
and I'm sure that if this was the option for for uh, you know for the Avengers game, they would have done it straight away if Sony had the option, right? Like they're, they're doing this because I'm, I'm glad they're doing something. Mm. That's we'll leave it at that. I think is that because there, there are okay. again there are places where you just, the saves aren't compatible at all, and you just nothing moves over, and yeah. you have to start a whole new game. Right, Cameron, do you have a harsh thought? The two things I have issue with here. Uh, the two things I have uh, issue with here. Um, First one, I'm just going to get out of the uh, out of the way quickly. Uh, quite a few users are having quite a few issues with this system, mm. and no save data is coming across. Ah, interesting. Oh, so that's that's not not a good start. Yeah, if it doesn't right, work. So that's that's, a that's my first issue. Second issue is coming from somebody who lived in regional Victoria in Australia, who to the age of 16 had a dial-up connection. I used to spend all night downloading songs three to four megabit files, which will take me hours on end, yeah? Mm-hmm. Data is such a precious resource to me, and the fact mm. that I can live in an age now where I have unlimited data is a godsend to me. And Especially during the whole um, Hall of Fame challenge, to be able to download and delete as I wanted to, yeah? The problem I have here is for those people that are on data caps that have to be conscious about this kind of stuff, it creates issues because you're downloading essentially two games. You, you may have, you know, the communication around this hasn't been exactly crystal clear at the start. You may have been playing on PS4, deleted it, thinking you're going to like, all right, PS5's coming out in a week. I'm going to download that version. I'm going to go on that. Everything's going to be crystal clear. Yeah, I mean... Again, you, then, you might not have ever been aware that the PS5 version was coming out. Suddenly you hear about it, you go pick it up, you're like, oh, absolutely, I'll, I'll play my yeah. save file because I already started it. Yeah, but like, pretty much the case in point, you have to go back to the PS4, you have to download that version again, do the update, put the save migration across, and then play it on PS5. I just... I don't know. I, I don't like stuff like this. Yeah. Uh, I, like, I, I, that... I, I understand your point, where you're coming from. But just being in that kind of environment for so much of my teenage life at the same time, I can understand where people that have those data caps and that would be coming from as well. I mean, look, I, I'm like the harsh reality is is that this generation is not for people who have data caps. Like games, have, games have never been bigger. Mm. Like holy shit! Like you, you essentially, if you have what is it, um, Cold War with with Warzone downloaded, it'll essentially fill up a entire five. It'll it'll take like five hundred gigs. Like that's crazy. If you have a data cap, like you, you're going to blow that out of the water no matter what. Like you just can't escape that. Uh, it's just it's massively do you, do unfortunate. You know but what it's I just do. the reality um, of things. Do you know what I do when I have the Series S and I take it to my parents' house? I download no. any game I can possible, fill up that hard drive, and then I take it there. And then I use if I use any kind of internet connection whatsoever, it's just the sync achievements, and that's it. Right. Yeah. It's just it, like I, I I know it's rough, but I think that this I think it, it talks more to a problem of the how big games are and that kind of stuff and and how how small terrible you know I, how small hard drives we have and how we have to delete and re-download stuff a lot because of you know the size of games yeah. in general. I just I just don't want the Don Matrix problem of hey we have a we have a console for that it's the Xbox 360. Yeah yeah I, I suppose, but um. The other thing is that, like, yeah, having to re-download the game is probably not the best bet. But I think the the thing that surprised me about this, because because uh, Alex is right, like this is pretty much the standard, and it probably will be the standard for a lot of Sony stuff. The thing that surprises me is though, this is a live service game, right? It's they it's main, the, that it, hmm. exactly they they Doesn't maintain a lot. Yeah. They maintain a huge amount of that data server side. So it's very interesting to me that they don't have that. Like, you need to have a local save moved over and imported. I mean, yeah. like, I understand if this was, you know, like, God of War or something. And it's like, okay, well, obviously, you know, there isn't really an online component. Yeah. Like, there isn't really a reason to be always connected. But if it's an always online game, then why, you know, why is this having to be handled by the on, on the client side? I don't think Destiny 2 has this issue whatsoever, either. That's, so that, that was my question, right? It's like, Destiny 2 is probably the other example of this that I can think of. It does feel like a thing to have. Cross-save. Because it was a recent launch, yeah. and they knew when the game came out on PS4 that it would be coming to PS5. So they certainly could have either baked the migration tab in at the beginning so you didn't need an update, 
or simply said, right, well, we'll sync the whole file to our servers the whole time, at least when you happen to be online. So yeah, they they could have handled this better if they'd thought ahead at the relatively recent game launch. Yeah, I think, just... I think to go further with that too, I think there's a few decisions from there that they didn't really think ahead with either. <laughs> fair, fair point. <laughs> I think that, yeah, in terms of the game itself, there are also some, some teething issues. I mean, I it. mean, I love the fact that Black Panther's coming, but like, um, yeah, Spider-Man. Where's my Spider-Man? Yeah, well, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's always going to be the issue, right? Uh, yeah. But I, yeah, you're, you're right. The, there are some... It might. Um, for all we know, they probably planned all this out, and a lot of it got left on the cutting room floor because things got last minute, uh, yeah. which is crazy to me because this game's been was in development for ages. Um, yeah, I think there was one other point I was going to make, but I can't remember it now. But that's ugh, whatever. Uh, yeah, it just it's 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 not great. Um, oh, oh, so Destiny Two. Sorry, uh, Destiny yeah. Two. So they they went through a whole thing when they changed to free to play, right? So I think part of that is that they essentially did a huge update in terms of like they were sunsetting old content and they were changing to make the cross play and, and your characters cross play uh, mm. and and like progress be across consoles from PC to Xbox to PlayStation. So again, it's a little different because they've, you know, they've had the infrastructure in place to do that and they've obviously put the resources into it where where the Avengers haven't. Uh, so it's not exactly apples with apples, but it is interesting to see, would be interesting to see how that sort of approach happens. Um, with other live service games of, of similar ilk. Uh, all right. Um, well, I think we've squeezed everything out of that that we can. Uh, so let's uh, move into what we've been playing. Uh, Cameron, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. So I'll start off with the Bethesda stuff. Um, console commands for Fallout 4, Skyrim, Wolfenstein, uh, The New Order. Pretty much just squeeze them out for a few easy G. Uh, Wolfenstein The New Order, now that I am unemployed, I am going to spend all next week playing and enjoying. Yeah, I might do that too, actually. Such, like, just going back, it is such a masterpiece. Yeah, it just, it's like, great. I don't know how they messed it up so badly with the second game, but that's fine. What, is it in terms of the old blood, or is it... No, no, Colossus? in terms of New Colossus, just, yeah, okay. it just doesn't, it doesn't feel as good. Yeah, but... I mean, you're going from perfection, like. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's like how how do you yeah how do you catch lightning yeah. in a bottle twice, right? It is difficult, yeah. but yeah. Um. So yeah, not really much to say that, but all these Bethesda games lately, I I don't know, I just have that uh, itch scratched. I want to go and play the Outer Wilds, and I tried to do uh, I tried to start a Supernova run the other day. Outer Didn't Worlds, I? you mean? Ah, uh, Outer Worlds. Sorry, yeah. Um, tried to start a Supernova run, got like ten to fifteen minutes of the the, the quick twenty minute one, and just had to you know had other priorities pick up so yeah um but just the yeah that kind of itch has been scratched lately call of duty ghosts um we've done a little bit this week yep so it's yeah it's we've had mixed results so i'm just i'm trying to i'm trying to think what we've done this week as compared to last week so this week we did uh we got through all of nightfall yep so we finished uh, nightfall i managed to get my last intel by just reloading the match after you left, which is great. Yeah, I had a pretty good time with that, actually. I mean, I, I, I'll admit that I fucked up on our, our first run through to get all the challenges done. I completely forgot about that. Fuck no, you. I know, Fuck I, no, I know. 100% my fault. I fucked up halfway through, uh, and I felt so... I, I'd already got the achievement, but I felt bad, so I um, so we ran through it again, and I helped Cameron get it. We got it the second time, though, and we didn't really have too much trouble with it. And, you know, we got some extra teeth out of it, so hey, it's not the end of the world. I know, but we would have got it the first time if you hadn't screwed everything up. You're right, you're right, you're right. I fucked it. I completely fucked it. Um, and then with that, we did a run of... Uh, Mayday. Mayday, there. I can't even remember the map names. Um, and it's, it's just always at that door, after the second area, that I fuck up. Because it's like one challenge of, like, killer... Uh, fucking... Uh, don't reload for like 60 seconds and the rhino just fall and hits you because you can't do anything other than knife. Yeah, this is your, your, your two rhinos coming at you. What are you going to do? Just like, well, I'm going to run around in circles for a bit and you just get murked. Yeah, it's, it's, oh. it, is, it gets, that, that level is very it's easy rough. to get overwhelmed on. Yeah. Uh, um, but we'll have to go back to it. And yeah, really looking forward to the third and fourth DLCs when we get time for that. But um, yeah, and then I'll start the 360 version next week, I think as well. Not really much else to say there. It's just the the grind that is Extinction. But I'm not, you know, like I used to hate Extinction. Now I'm actually quite enjoying it as a game mode. 
yeah, once you actually have some of the upgrades, you understand how like the, the levels work and you yeah, have people to play with. Like that extinction does not work single player like <coughs> escape, right? It's essentially a roguelite, yeah? <coughs> Uh, kind of. It's, yeah, I think it's way. wave based. There is there are there are some random elements, I suppose, but it is it, it is run based. Sure. Yeah. It's it's road light. I I mean like Kirby would probably get that pissed off. Time yeah, yeah, me, yeah. Well, so well Kirby's not here, so. <laughs> um. But you you you're doing well in your uh, your Call of Duty uh challenge. Yeah, I um I had to repurchase those three games that I uh, misdelivered. So those will Wait, show up next so week. How did you miss deliver those, Cameron? Uh, eBay reverted my to my previous address. Oh, okay, right. So they just lost the for then. And then I um, pretty much put a redirection out, but I haven't seen it for like two to three weeks. So, yep. Pretty sure it's lost in the mail. But I mean, if I end up getting it, then I can um, double box. So that's fun. Just for twice the amount that I was going to pay for them. Anyway. Uh, control... Pretty much, how do I say that control? I finished the main game. It was all like, I shouldn't say it was all right. It was a, it was a pretty good game. Um, but the whole time I was really just keen for the AWE expansion. Mm-hmm. None of the audio really synced up for me. It kind of just let me feeling quite you, down about the whole experience. You had, yeah, you, you had some technical issues, right? Yeah. So the cutscenes, just the audio when, like, I was watching the Alan. Like the Alan Wake, like uh, when he's how do you explain it? like in front of the fireplace talking to um, Mo- monologuing. Mon- yeah, yeah to, when he's monologuing, to... all that kind of stuff. The audio just didn't sync up, and I thought it was meant to be just the feature of it. Like it was like a <laughs> diff- no, but like it was like presented in such a way that it was only these scenes, and I'm just like, all right, this is strange. Like maybe he just he can only hear his thoughts. Maybe it's subtitled for that reason. But I just always play the subtitles anyway, so I was like really confused about it all. Um, and yeah, I just I felt really let down. And the Foundation DLC is not really that great either. I mean, I liked it from a like puzzle perspective, but in terms of story and like the enemies and stuff, it's kind of boring. Yeah, you just it, like the main game. Yeah, when you get to the uh, when you get to the what's the maze called? Uh, the Ashtray Maze. Ashtray Maze. Just that song is at like that sells the entire game for me. Yeah, it's great. It's Fucking so good. I love that song. Um, but I mean, like, I'm just finishing it off. It's just added another one to the Game Pass list. Um, other than that, play Journey to the Savage Planet solo because nobody likes me. <laughs> uh, really enjoying it. Don't know why I didn't play it earlier. This was one of the games that I tried to pick up when EB was having the sales, and I think it reduced it to 15 bucks, but I couldn't find a copy anywhere. Really good game. Mm. And I'm really looking forward to when Valak helps me with the speedrun. <laughs> to actually Pretty. play with another human. Right um, here, buddy. What, he's helping you or he's helping me? Oh, he's going he's gonna to help both of us. Yeah. You going to help me? <laughs> nah, what are you talking about? Yeah, you, yeah, d- yeah. Again, again I, will, I will explain my reasoning when we get to my turn. All right, cool. Um, and pretty much uh, other than that, the only other game that I played, but I haven't unlocked a single achievement in, is Sign of the Soldier. Hmm. Have you guys heard of Sign of the Soldier? Uh, nope. I've heard of it. I do not know anything about it. Okay. So Sign of the Soldier is essentially a digerati game that has a very interesting concept that I've had my eyes on for like the last few weeks. Um, to the point that I actually re- requested a review code for it just to have a proper look at it. How the game works is essentially your mother passes away. She used to travel all over, um, collecting goods for her shop, and pretty much just you know selling it, then traveling again, selling it just to make a living. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's pretty much famous across the whole country. How this game works in terms of gameplay is it gives you a deck of cards with shapes on it like circle, triangle, square, etc. Yeah? And those are your language cards. So you'll start off with just having a few circle or triangle cards and you'll you'll come across a stranger and you'll start a conversation with them. You'll have like circle, you'll match circle to circle to build and flow that conversation. Right. Essentially though, as you as you expand outwards more into I guess across the country, that language barrier gets harder. And you might have a few 
de uh, cards in your deck that are like s squares or stars as opposed to your circles and triangles. So if, you, if you're forced with a hand that you can't play um, anything that matches what their dialogue option is, that communication will break down and they will um, they'll get frustrated and angry with you because they can't understand what you're talking about or you're coming across as rude or disruptive of what they're trying to communicate. Hmm. Which makes it very hard for you to get... Um, you, essentially, you're carrying on your mother's legacy by getting items to sell in the shop, that kind of stuff. But people don't want to trade with you in their goods and wares because they're perceiving you as being rude or not communicating. You know, it's hmm. building on that language barrier. And I just think it's so interesting as a concept. Yeah, it's a great concept. To have a to have a language barrier centered around a deck of cards, essentially. And like every conversation you pass, you can choose like one of the cards at the top to replace a card in your hand. Um, and then you'll have stuff that uh, will help you. Like there'll be a, I think it's like a blockchain at the end of the card. So if that conversation breaks down, you can play that. So then it's like a safety net. You'll have certain cards that you can, which are called clarify cards that you can insert into a specific spot in the conversation to to clarify that conversation. It's just such an interesting concept. Uh, unfortunately, there are no achievement guides really out for it yet. It's been out for Steam for quite a while. Um, all the achievements do work, but I don't think anybody on TA has completed it. However, it only has been out for, I think, like less than a week. Right, right. But uh, in terms of um, art style, absolutely beautiful. Uh, very like artistic kind of countryside background settings that kind of stuff I can't really think of a comparison to put it against um, but I think as I play this more and I actually start unlocking achievements this will probably be in my top five for this year wow okay I'm I'm interested then that sounds fantastic I think if there was an achievement guide straight like if there was an achievement guide straight away I would be recommending this to everybody far and few in between um, just the fact that I think a lot of these achievements are very involved. Hmm. It might not be everybody's game, especially if you're a completionist. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Well, um, I will keep, keep an eye out for it then. Yeah. Um, Alex, do you want to go that, next? I was going to say, is that everything you played? Uh, oh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I was on 3,600 for the week. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so I have had a complete blast over the last couple of weeks. So I'm going to sort of troll down my games one by one with little snippets. And hey, if you want to know more, then you can ask questions after. Uh, but I just want to highlight some of the fantastic stuff that's around. So, kicked it off with Sayonara Wild Hearts. Have either of you played that? Okay, go play. No, it's on my list. It's Sayonara my list. is a music yep. game which just has this amazing sense of style, basically. They've got mostly electronic type music, so it's not rock. Um, but basically with this, there's this purple dreamscape, typically purple and blue and stuff, that you zip through, you're, you're hitting beats in time with the music, essentially, uh, to, to jump, dodge obstacles, that kind of stuff, you're moving your character around the screen, and every single level, although it's the same mechanic, uh, in terms of hitting things in time with music, takes you through so many different types of actions and mindsets, so you're on a motorcycle fighting with gigantic swords, you are in a Mario-themed level where you're grabbing the odd mushroom, you're shooting wolves in a forest, you're flying through a canyon that opens up, and all of it is just so inventive and creative. Uh, again, it's not its not the hardest game, you know, it, it, the mechanics are relatively simple, but what they do with it is brilliant. And essentially, the way I think of the game is it is a music album turned into a game. So the entire content within this thing is about an hour, an hour 20, something like that, in terms of all the songs back to back. It's a sim single album of music, but they've turned it into such a creative, surprising, delightful and stylish experience that, you know, you can play those seven times through and it will just, it, it's just great fun, basically. So if playing an album of music as a game sounds appealing to you, by all means, check out a YouTube video to check you're going to click with the music a bit. Uh, but if you do click with it, like it is so well made, so creative. Love that to bits. 
Next one I played was Sundered Eldritch Edition, which is part of the Metroidvania kick I've been on recently. I've just been loving those games. I love the exploration. Uh, Sundered has this hand-drawn style, sort of painterly, sort of, if you think of the Disney's Hercules movie that came out, um, sort of similar to the stuff that they use for the Gospel and the Oracles and that kind of thing. Um, and it looks great in motion, although I would love it if they doubled the frame rate, essentially. That's the only thing I say with the animation. That, yeah, uh, totally agree. Yeah. Um, the game, it starts out really atmospheric as you explore this area. I will say it throws enemies at you. Uh, they flood the screen, and I, I have held off recommending it to somebody who watched me play it and sort of said, that looks amazing. And I had to tell them in the end not to get it because it wasn't going to work for them because it is just a fight room full of enemies type game uh, from, like, 15 minutes in toward, until the end. Uh, it's got a really unique map concept, uh, which is nice. It's like they talked about road like elements. I would not go that far. Uh, but basically, the map layout is fixed. But within each major room of the game, they then randomize the sub rooms. So you sort of you get your bearings in the map, and everything's in more or less the same layout. But the specific route you take to get them is different every time. So every time you step into a room, you don't know how it's going to go, where the enemies will be, where the corridors will be, that kind of thing. Sort of cool, uh, although they do repeat in the end if you get used to them. Uh, the main thing I put against it is that grinding hurts it in the end game. Grinding is so powerful, like by the time you hit the top of the tree, everything's easy, but until you get there, everything's hard, and there's quite a lot of it. So, so like a JRPG, the grind sort of hurts it. But the, the style, if you are up for a room full of enemies type game, that was really fun. Next up, Sunset Overdrive. I told you I've been playing some good stuff. Uh, so this one, it feels like a spiritual successor to Jet Set Radio. You are grinding across a city, massive open world city. Uh, the traversal options are just so open. You can sort of bounce off the ground, bounce off trees, grind along rails. It's all been laid out really intelligently. It's got a whole fourth wall breaking main player and come for that cast. And I know that often doesn't work. But the quality of the writing, quality of the dialogue delivery just shines throughout the game, makes it work, even for someone like me who often gets a bit turned off by some of that humor, to be fair. Here, it was just so well delivered that it's amazing. Uh, and there's a great creativity in the sets of weapons that you get to fight, essentially hordes of yellow zombies in that game. Uh, and then I played Time Spinner. Uh, Time Spinner, another Metroidvania sort of, old style graphics so it looks a bit like a really pretty 16-bit game kind of thing um it it just feels really pretty i suppose even as you move around the animation as your character sort of twirls it, it's just it feels fun and relaxing to move around the game it's got a simple story which doesn't particularly surprise you at all um it's called time spinner it doesn't involve time travel right that's not a spoiler uh and it, it makes it work quite well spoiled. in a <laughs> it makes it work quite well. Sorry, I spoiled the first half of the game's title for you. Um, <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> it! It makes it work quite well. Do you spend the second half of the game spinning around in circles? Uh, yes. You, you, to be fair, it is, it's, a, it's a Metroidvania game, so there is a lot of circling you do, yes. Yeah, and, and your double jump, the, the double jump part of it, you do as well. <laughs> After that... Sure, um, sure, actually, I had not thought about that. <laughs> Yesterday I played Undertale, which has just come to Xbox with achievements in Game Pass. Uh, I don't want to oversell it because it's not some epic, right? Undertale is a game you should all play, especially if you're into turn-based RPGs, but it's not like the second coming or anything. What it is, it's a quirky little different palette cleanser of a game, which I beat it with no guide and sort of got the proper endings and things in. It was probably 10 hours by the time I was done. You can get all the achievements in four or five hours, even without a guide. You can finish the game for the first time a couple of hours later, and then the game drops hints on you to sort of go do this and that to get the true ending. So, you know, 10 hours, well spent. But it just has a totally different and fresh perspective on all of the tired old RPG tropes um, that you can play in a couple of different ways. The story is genuinely different. There are so many little details and highlights. Again, I don't want to oversell it because it's not going to change your life, but it's, a just, it's just so refreshing. It's so different. If you like turn-based RPGs, go give this one a go. And that's For curiosity's sake, how do you how do you think this would fare on uh, X Club? I, I wanted to play yeah. some mobile. How do you reckon? Yeah, it'll be fine. It's a turn-based turn-based game still. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's turn-based, although oh, there guys, are some ac- slight yes, action elements. Yeah, actually, that's going to go yeah, really badly like, on yeah, X Club. There is definitely. <laughs> 
I mean, again, it's it's relatively forgiving. I'll talk a little bit about it because I, I played it as well this week. Um, okay. But yeah, I, th- I think I think it would again. You'll need a stable connection, but in terms of like graphical stuff, like you won't have anything to worry about. It should be fine. Yeah, I just wanted to know like if I wanted to watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier tonight and play that at the same time if it's going to Ooh, yeah, I, mean, I would okay. I, I, okay. again it's, yeah, a, it's, a, it's, a, specific ga- it's a game you probably want to is. focus on as well yeah yeah that's true um, but basically the way it happens is you'll take your turn in the turn based battling system and that will set up what's going to happen but then actually once you and your opponent have locked in your move what actually plays out is that they will they will sort of fire bullets at you and you have to dodge them on screen um or to do mechanics effectively so that bit would be really difficult over x card most likely okay yeah yeah uh, so yeah that's me done do you want to talk more undertale oh unless yeah, you want to ask about any of those absolutely. games yeah, so i mean look I, I, I want to talk about i want to talk about all those games those those are all like again you're speaking my language those are all fantastic games okay so time spinner i also absolutely loved i i think in it, it reminds me a lot of Bloodstained, as you'd expect, because they're both uh, mm. sort of spiritual successors to Symphony of the Night, but, like, they take different messages away from that, right? Like, um, Time Spinner is much more traditional. Uh, it, you know, keeps that same sort of art style, has a beautiful animation, relative... Like, I like the, the time travel mechanic, but it's kind of... It's very standard, whereas Bloodstained <laughs> is just like, we're going to chuck everything, everything that's been in this Castlevania and every other one in the future with mechanics... And, like, you could break it this way, that way. You can flip the game on its head. You could do this, you could do that. Like, you just everything. And I love both of those games. I mean, I like Bloodstained a bit more because it's just a bit more ridiculous. Um, and it was made by the guy who made Symphony of the Night, so it's almost cheating. Uh, but I, I'm totally with you. Like, I, I love Time Spin. I had such a good time with it. So it was a really great sort of, yeah, like, 10 to 12-hour experience of just, like, going through, getting the endings. Um, some somewhat tough bosses, but, like, I think the difficulty was was about right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah, it was definitely one of my, uh, one of my favorite... Um, uh, Metro Advantage that I played that year. Uh, Sunset Overdrive, like we've talked about before, is so good. Cameron's favorite game ever. Um, Undertale, I absolutely loved. Um, I'll talk about a bit about that. And then, um, sorry, what was the other? And then Sayonara Wild Hearts has been on my list for ages. I'm way, I'm, it's one of those things that it, once it hits Game Pass, I'm jumping on it first day, right? Like oh, it's, for sure. It's like, I, I love I, I love pretty much anything Annapurna does. Like that the Annapurna Interactive mm. stuff has just some, uh, they, they publish some really, really great games. I'm really looking forward to that Um. Uh, what's the one with um, Daisy Ridley in it? It's gonna be it's just like it's like ten minutes or something. It's, it's like you play the game on a loop and you have to kind of figure out. Um, it's like, is it eight minutes? Eight minutes, I think it's called or something. Yeah, where it's like essentially the game is on a loop uh, and you have to try and figure out the way of you, you've got essentially the game loops every eight minutes. So you need to figure out the right way of going through stuff, learning things, going minutes. back and doing this twelve minutes, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that, and I like I like a lot of what Annapurna has done in the past. And for those um, who haven't heard the name, these I've are the guys playing. who did Kentucky Route Zero, Outer Wilds, What Remains of Edith Finch, Donut County, and Sayonara Wild Hearts. Yeah, absolutely. And then a few other bits and pieces. But uh, yeah, exactly. Those, those are the notable ones for sure. Um, Just for curiosity's sake, like 12 minutes yes. is still meant to be releasing in 2021 too. Nice. Yes, I'm, I'm really hoping because again we, we saw the new trailer for it and now that they've announced they had like you know I think Willem Dafoe's in it now or something. Willem Dafoe, <laughs> James McAvoy, Daisy Ridley. Yeah, so they actually Disney got Max. some some actual actual big names for it, which is like Annapurna is great for that because they do movies as well. So I guess that makes sense. Uh, in terms of what I've been playing, I've got a big list as well. Undertale. So yeah, smash through that. Um, I just I'm so glad this was finally on the Xbox again I'm, I, I liked earning achievements for it but if they just brought it out to the Xbox without the achievements I probably would have played it anyway I love this game again it is the epitome of a narrative tone music like it, it has everything and then like gameplay is it, like it, it tells the story through the gameplay in a way but again the gameplay is not what the game is about I mean it's interesting because it's a bullet hell game that's mixed with JRPG mechanics but the way they do it is very interesting because the enemies that attack you will attack you in different ways. So it's not just bullets coming down. It's like, so for example, uh, I fought a really buff uh, uh, mer horse. See, I guess he was a seahorse. He, he had a horse for, horse top and he had a fish tail. And one of the, one of the attack, the, basically one of the things I did was I flexed at him and he flexed back at me. And so instead of like bullets coming at me, there were just giant biceps flying across the screen that you have to dodge. Uh, and every time you do, every time you flex, his attack goes up, and so does yours. And you have to essentially. There's, it's a little bit of a thing, but again, every enemy has a kind of 
fun way of taking them out without necessarily killing them. Uh, and and it's essentially, sense that one's way. Essentially, you. F- to figuring that yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. You exactly. Game, like you, you will look- die so much because you come across this enemy and you don't know that the thing to do for this super buff guy is to flex. You might think that oh, maybe you should try to soothe him or whatever, you know. And you'll get a few menu options you've got to expand, yeah. and they'll all make him do different things back in his bullet hell game. Um, until you finally realize yeah. that, oh, what I do against these guys is I get him a flex off till he flexes so much his muscles basically pop him out of the room. You know, yeah, so exactly. It's so discovery. good. And, and so, exactly. And it's great because you, you can check and, you know, you get it from visual cues of what the enemy looks like and, like, there are some hints in the game itself. Uh, and then even the bosses, like, the bosses are all interesting and unique. Mm. Uh, and there's so many, the, you know, there are various ways. People, I mean, I'm sure people have heard about the game. Uh, it is... I know, I know Alex, you said that the game isn't life-changing, but I think for a lot of people it has been, uh, for better or worse. I mean, Undertale has one of the, the most rabid fan bases I've ever seen on the internet. Like, it's crazy. I posted a video in one of the discords around um, that I think Super Eyepatch Wolf did about him delving into the Undertale community. And he goes, it's like a 40-minute video of him just digging, 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 and just finding, like, okay, here's this sub-community, and here's the spin-off sub-community. Like, it's, it's, it's like, it, it's like a church. Like, it's crazy. Like, they've had so many different sects and split-off, and, like, it's, yeah. Hmm. So, like, under, again, and you're right, like, Undertale, in terms of actually what the game is, is not anything... I mean, it's revolutionary in terms of, like, how it tells its story and, and kind of the mechanics it uses and the sort of fourth-wall stuff, and there's a lot of really interesting kind of things that it does. But in terms of the gameplay, it is a turn-based bullet hell um, with... Um, you know, with RPG mechanics, I suppose. But, but yeah, like I, I loved it. I'm so happy I got to play through it again. Uh, Battlefield Four. No, I'm just kidding. We haven't had a chance to play Battlefield Four. It's not <laughs> working. We still can't connect to the damn EA servers. It's been, it's been. Ah, oh, Pluto, mate. I know, I know. It's rough, mate. We, we, we just have not because we're trying to get four of us into a into a game, and there's always one of us who cannot get connect to the EA servers. So, we got one achievement left. One of these days, we'll get to it. Maybe after this, who knows? Uh, I've been playing Halo Wars Two. Uh, I, one of my friends asked me some help with a co-op achievement and I decided, oh, might as well re-download it. Went through, finished the campaign. Um, I was trying to remember, I was like, wow, this game's great. Like, why did I stop playing it? And then I looked at the, uh, there's an achievement for playing, uh, getting a weekly challenge for four weeks in a row that's glitchy. And I suddenly remembered, I was like, oh, that's right. I got to week five and it still didn't unlock. And I was like, fuck this. I'm not playing this ever again. Um, someone has found like a solution where essentially you have to, once you complete a challenge for the week quit out and delete your local save and have force it to <laughs> sync your save to make sure it's so yeah again it's so ropey because it runs on halo waypoint so it's it's a total fucking mess but if i get the achievement we'll find out in about a month um i'm going through doing the dlc now having a good time with it i need to go through to my legendary playthrough it's a really great game it is it's a basic enough rp as a basic enough rts where uh, there's a little bit of strategy involved. So it's like it's a bit more than maybe your standard command and conquer in terms of like you need to have like the base building. You can't just build everything. You have like sort of set points. Um, but on easy building, you know, 15 scorpion tanks and rolling over the enemy base is still a viable strategy. So I still get to have that kind of fun. And you can also turn on skulls. Uh, there are skulls like in the main Halo games, uh, but there are positive and negative ones. So there are ones that give you extra, give guys extra health, make them uh, spawn faster. Uh, give you leader abilities quicker, that kind of stuff. But you also have ones that, you know, det- are detrimental, enemies become harder, uh, they become cloaked, that kind of stuff. They can affect your score and modifier. But either way, great game. It's a big achievement list. There's a lot of DLC for it, uh, but I just absolutely love it. Um, I also played Cod Ghost, as we talked about. Uh, I played a bit of Guitar Hero World Tour. Um, I, I'm not really sure why. Um, well, I do know why. It's because my brother was like, hey, do you want to play it? And I'm like, sure. So I got the guitar out. Um, made my way through the base uh, career so now I've got all the careers done I might I'm, I went through on beginner because I was like oh I'll do it on easy it's been a few years I'm st- like, I was like most of the easy songs like the early ones are fine but you know you get to like uh, hop for teacher towards the end of it and like trapped under ice and I'm just like even on easy my hands are like I just don't really? have the dexterity for this I, don't, I, 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 I can still do it right but I, again I was trying to do every single I was trying to do like every song to finish the campaign like I normally with guitar you're like you know you like three or four songs like yeah I did great on those and I'm gonna put it down for a bit or hand it to someone else no no I was doing like 20 songs in a row so I did like the first like five or so on easy I was like yeah yeah I'm I'm still you know I'm getting five stars doing right and then suddenly the cramps started fitting in and I was like oh great okay yeah this is my carpal tunnel just is absolutely fucking me so I put it on beginner and just yeah maybe it was just because back when I was 11-12 with PS2 I just sat with guitar 2 and did not 
do anything else. It was just 100 percenting songs of medium and hard. Yeah, see, like I can't, yeah, I, I can't do it anymore. Like I used to be okay at hard, but I, I expert was too difficult. Like I used, my my brother was the ex, was the the expert player in our house, uh, so yeah. he would he would play most of that again, which is why I haven't got most of the cop achievements done because he he had, could even he couldn't drag me to five stars on most of them. Uh, but yeah, again, I had a bit of fun with it. I'll probably try and go back and. You know, I mean, I, I need to do band career, so I might just hook myself up with the mic and do some singing. Um, I mean, I was singing along to most of the songs anyway, so, you know, might as well get some score for it. Uh, also, I played a bit of Sacred 2. I had had someone uh, on uh, AHA asking for a bit of help with that, so we jumped on, got him his last achievement, he helped me out with some, some good gear so I can rush through that. It's one of my dreaded non-backwards compatible 360 games that I have to finish. It's also one that I had, like, five achievements in for year, like since, like, 2011 or 12. So it's been it's been weighing me down on the completion percentage for a long time. It's one of those ones that I wish I hadn't started, but now I've got a build and I've got characters and I've got some of the late game achievements taken care of already, so I can just kind of have fun with it, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, and then the, the main thing I've been playing is uh, Journey to the Savage Planet. So uh, like Cameron, I have been valicking this. Uh, I'm going to try and get it done before it leaves Game Pass. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a first-person Metroidvania. I mean, it's essentially Metroid Prime with a sense of humor. It's like, really good. It's really good. Like I'm having a fucking fantastic time with it. Like, like it's. Uh, yeah. I I don't know why I didn't pick it up. Like, I, like I did want to get a physical copy of it because that's just how I am at the moment. Just trying to find cheap games for, just in case they do leave Game Pass like this situation. But yeah, I mean, this is a really good game that I really wish I had a co-op partner with, and like I feel like I'm playing it like. You know, I'm having fun time with it, but it would just be better with a friend. All right, all right, we'll do it. We'll do it. All right, you you fucking guilted me into it. Don't worry about it. We'll we'll jump on. Right. You know, you know what? I started playing it last night. Yeah, I have not played anything else since. Okay. Like I'm, all right, I'm fine. committed to this. So you know all what, right. Alex? Fuck you. I'll play games when I want to play games. Sorry, wrong Alex. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Other Alex, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you're the uh, good Alex. Then we have the other Alex. I'll take that. Yeah, the other Alex. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell, we'll, we'll play some cop. Actually, it's such a good game. I'm having a really, really great time with it. Um, the combat is uh, not the best. Like, it's again, I'm I. You get to bitch slap people. What are you talking about? <laughs> it starts off pretty weird, and like it's it's fine up until I'm getting towards the end of the game now. I'm on, I'm in the like the last. There's, there's like three zones. I'm in the last zone, and I'm I'm sort of I think I'm pretty close to the final boss. I think. Um, I still, I'm still missing a shitload of collectibles because it's all over the place. But um, yeah, like some of the la- later enemies, um, you, f- you find an enemy called the Slamphibian. Um, yeah, it's yeah. I haven't quite figured out what the mecha- like. I kind of know what the mechanic is, but it's a little. There's a lot of dodging involved, and it feels like it's kind of bullshit. Um, like you just take a lot of hits. But uh, anyway, I think may- I'm either that or I'm just a scrub. But I'm, I'm having a good time. Like it's great. It's got the typical go around and collect items to upgrade stuff, um, get items to uh, collect health upgrades, um, collect you know, weapon upgrades. It's like, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a Metroidvania it, like through and through. Um, almost to a fault actually, because it, it does, there is a lot of backtracking and a lot of side stuff that you need to be keeping, keeping track of. Um, uh, also, uh, if you're starting the game up, uh, one of the, the, the uh, survey at the beginning will ask you what, who you most identify as with a bunch of pictures. Uh, Cameron, do, what did you pick for that? Did you just pick like a random guy? Because like, they're all like very 80s looking hair, like mullets and... I think I picked the very first one. Okay, yeah. So I picked the dog because I thought it was... Because one of the pictures of a dog, which I thought was funny, right? All of my voice lines are now just barks and woofs. <laughs> <laughs> every I, every I, time... I, I, I gotta say, the thing it, that this game does well, though, is it has a good sense of humor. It's fucking hilarious. I mean, it is, like, pretty juvenile, like, in a, in a kind of, like, not quite as bad as, like, Borderlands meme humor, but it is pretty funny. Um, it's, like, it's, it's pretty lowbrow, but yeah. Have I you, wrote, yeah, so I, I picked the dog you, for, like, a joke, right? Oh, sorry, yep. Have you done any of the surveys that come in? Uh, yeah, yeah, the surveys are hilarious, yeah. They're also, uh, yeah, yeah it's like, I, uh, I think I picked, like, the dumbest options, and they're just, like, I, I I think it's just like life is meaningless or something, and they're just like, oh, we feel really sorry for you. Here's a bunch of credits. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, oh, he's, he's, okay. a, he's, a, he's a he's a dog meat injection. Uh, and like one one of the questions I got asked was, 
hey, you're going to be a millionaire now once you finish this mission. What are you going to go buy? And it was like, um, droids, mansion, or super yacht. So I picked droids, right? It's like, great. Now that we know that you like that, we're going to charge you double for it. I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh yeah it was, it was it's, it's yeah so i picked the dog because i was like that's hilarious i thought it was just gonna be like a profile picture but now whenever i run and run out of stamina like you hear the panting because it's like a dog panting and if you get hit you hear like dog yelps and whenever you like eat the um the health the health stuff that you find you it's like a butt like it's like oh, 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 like a dog it's oh god and you can't change it it's like <laughs> you're, you're, you're stuck with it but yeah so because i was going to and i was like i heard it and i was like am i a dog why the fuck am I a dog? And then I like, like I was like, it seems weird. Like, is this just like a? And then I remember I, I was like, I picked the dog. I picked the dog for the meme, and the meme fucking came back to bite me in the ass. But it's a yeah, hilarious okay. game. Um, you probably don't have a lot of time after you've heard this. You got about a week to finish it. Um, I've got even less because I need to get it done this week because I'm away um, uh, the final week of March. So we're gonna have to really. Really in game advertise, uh, in game advertisements as well are just absolutely. Oh like every- yes, yes, there's a lot of FMV in this game. Mm. Everything's like all colourful, all eighties. Just yeah, it's, it's very sort of yeah, it's it's very bright in a, in a in a way that's kind of refreshing. Like I, yeah, I really like it. I mean, look, if they use this as a template for the new Metro Prime, I'm fine with that. Metro Prime Four has been having a lot of trouble, so <laughs> they whatever they can steal. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm having a great time with it. But um. Yes, yeah, so lots this week. Um, that puts me at uh, three thousand seven hundred and sixty-five. Uh, so, oh, I know. So, Gears of War two, which is like oh, just that slog. Uh, You're I, still I working levels... on the uh, just working through the fifty maps, yeah? No, we've, so we've done the maps. Maps are good, okay, but yeah. now we're doing now we're doing the the leveling up because the XP boost is uh, been disabled. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so we have to do it the long way. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I'm at level seventy-seven. Um, it's I'm I'm hitting maybe a level a day, maybe, and it's taking me about three to four hours of boosting to get up a level, and it's only going to increase. So, I think I'm not probably I'm probably not going to get this done in the next month. It's so you're be you're like starting Gears after. Five after, yeah? I'm not. I'm probably I'm <laughs> probably never going to play another Gears game again. Um, or at least not starting one anyway. Um, unless I want to get into Gears Pop for some reason. <laughs> well, they say they're going to make those uh, cheap unless they're giving all the achievements. It's your chance. Yeah, I mean, well, as, as long as the if if they change it to make yeah. it the look, achievement, look. they I, I pop all the achievements by playing one game. I might consider. Look, it, but... look, that's all well and great, yeah. But if I can't even access the fucking game, it's <laughs> yeah, not fair. gonna happen. Fair, you're right. You're right. Uh... All right. Um, well, let's let's uh, that's that's all I've been playing. So let's move on to our community questions or question as it is this week. Uh, so we got a question in from uh, Mister Reset Forty Two, fellow Kiwi. Uh, is any stories about being screwed over by a controller batteries going flat at the worst possible time? Recent, um, I was going to say, recent memory, the only one I can think about is didn't really screw us over because we already did the moon easter egg. Oh, yes. But, yeah, but that, that was one. bad. Yeah, so so um, so um basically, so for those who... We talked about it a couple episodes ago, but uh, Cameron Kiku and I were doing the moon easter egg and we managed to get through it. Um. But we we'd got through it, so we decided we were going to try and do the um, what's the achievement called? Is it ground control? Ground control, yeah. So we're trying to do the ground control achievement at the same time, since we'd done a bunch of waves anyway, and we had all the perks and sure. Um, and then Cameron's like, "Oh, hey, I have to go change my batteries and my controller. Uh, they're dying." So I'll, I'll be like, you know, I'll be like a minute maybe. And so we wait, and we wait, and we wait, <laughs> and we wait, and we're like, "What the what the fuck's happened?" To- and so we we were convinced that you'd like you know you'd Nikita had murdered you or something or you'd you know you just you just put a foot through your TV or you know something had happened to you. Jeez. Um, and so we're like, well, great, because we're we're training the zombie trying to keep them back because again we're being attacked by hordes and hordes and hordes of zombies at a high wave, and you're just fucking standing there like a stunned mullet, <laughs> just getting absolutely wrecked. And so we're just running so, around trying to pick you up, and yeah. So what happened with that was I replaced the batteries. The controller just never resynced to the console. I then had to grab a second controller, get Adrian to kick me from the party, rejoin the party on my other Series X, and then say, "Well, uh, yeah, this this probably ain't happening anymore." Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it did happen eventually uh, at a later date, which we also spoke about. But yeah, yeah. I think that's 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 a that's a great example of that. 
Um, kind of, kind of makes me appreciate extinction because you can kind of drop out and rejoin if it's a custom match and still get achievements. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. You, you, you can also get achievements for joining at the very last minute. Right, Kiku? Um, <laughs> uh, he, he, sw- he, he swears you're the one that um, sucks up to him. Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Motherfucker. But saying that, like, he is um, the one that carries us in every single fucking cod. Yeah, I know, I know. But that's not funny to admit on a podcast, right? He's not here, so <laughs> fuck him. Um... <laughs> Alex, do you have any, any good examples of, uh, of controller mishaps? Not really. Um, I, I, I had one, you know, run out of battery during a boss battle not too long ago, sort of ag ag retry, but nothing that's non-standard, you know. It, it is, yeah, it's, it's just, it's still not a great feeling. Like, it, it is, there's nothing worse than having a stressful game where you can't pause and suddenly he says, hey, battery's low, and you're like, yeah. oh, fuck. And especially with, um, like, it was so... Uh, I got some new battery packs for my birthday, but I was running an old one that I have for my old Xbox One, and uh, I unplugged it because I was like, oh, I was because I was just that further away from the TV, and I got into a fight. I think it was in, I was actually in Journey actually because I was I was uh, because you can't pause in that game, um, Journey Savage Planet, and uh, and I got into a fight with uh, the the first boss. Um, and yeah, my controller was just like, ah, yeah, battery's low. I'm like, oh, it's fine, I'll get through it. You know, boss fight takes about you know five minutes or so. I get him down to his last bit of health bar, and suddenly he's just like, yeah, no, battery's not low, battery's dead. And so I happened, I happened to have been smacked off of the platform and dropped straight into the lava, and it's damage over time. So I'm desperately trying to find a plug, find my replacement batteries while my health is ticking down quite quickly. Um, I managed to pull it off, but. It was, and then yeah, he kills me anyway because I managed to get back up there with like one health less, and he just punches me in the face. But yeah, so it's it's it, it's happened pretty recently. But now that I have my battery pack, I'm hoping that uh, that doesn't happen. I, it more happens to me with a headset, you know, where you're in a session or or you've got like you know you've got like a three hour session coming up, and you've you <clears throat> turn on. I've got my turtle beaches, and I turn them on, and suddenly, hey, battery's at like ten percent. I'm like, oh fuck, right, okay, well. I'm going to either have to dig out my wired headset, which is somewhere in a massive box somewhere, or I'm going to just have to get on the uh, get on the laptop and just start messaging people and working on my smoke signals and Morse code. Actually, that is the other thing about the Microsoft headset. It doesn't have a 3.5mm jack, which for me, I, I love Ooh. the flexibility of being able no, to yeah, just sort is. of use it wireless or wired and either way plug it into anything, yeah, etc. Yeah. That For me, that would almost be a deal breaker to not have that flexibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do those? I wonder if my ones have them. Actually, it's a good question because I, I don't think so. Oh, actually, no. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I never used it. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. I mean, like that. They're having that sort of flexibility is like super, super helpful. Having options is good. Yeah, because I I game with mine plugged so, in yeah. because I've got a long enough cable, and then I never need to worry about headset battery. You know. Oh, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Holding up two boxes, oh. can you tell me what the difference is in wording between each one? I can't really uh, read it properly on my camera. And you ex- what, what, one of them says uh, 4 Series X, yep. uh, and the other one I don't think, I think says... Uh, does it say 4 Xbox One? C100. A- X, uh, Xbox One, Xbox One, Xbox One S, and Xbox One X. I see. So you're going back to my issue a few weeks ago. The only problem I have with battery... Pax is the naming conventions. <laughs> I mean, they, they, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the the first party ones work in both controllers, but the third party ones don't necessarily. All right. Um, well, thank no, you for the question. No, the, the 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 battery compartments are like off by a centimeter or two. Yeah. So oh, you I mean... can't you can't use a because the Series X controller is slightly smaller than an Xbox One controller. You need battery packs specifically for that. Hang on, I'm, I'm pulling mine out right now. Let's have a look. I know this is exciting stuff for our listeners, but um, yeah, they're, ident- they're identical. I don't know. Uh, I... Can you switch them? I, I tried Microsoft to fit mine in mine. That... It didn't work. I know Microsoft announced that a lot of third-party stuff wouldn't fit because they have changed the size of that bag. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but I think that the the uh, first party ones are small enough that they still fit in there. Because that's that's what I was using. That's why my old one died because it was the old one that I was using for my. Uh, for, for I my I tried to fit my first party one in, 
like pretty much slams it in. I closed it up. I could not get it to turn on. Yeesh. So, so this is why I went out and bought the Xbox One X one. You bought two of them, yeah. <laughs> and then I bought the Xbox Series X one. Well, I mean, look, right. I, I, I'm continuously collecting Xbox accessories. I now have my skateboard. I'm happy. If somebody can hook me up with uh, some of the old school flight sim stuff, uh, a drum kit pedal, because I have and, the drum and kit, a, but not the pedal. And a U-Draw tablet. I have the U-Draw tablet. Of course Actually, I got two of them. <laughs> I, got, I got like four DG Heroes. I've got like two vision cameras. Um... I've got two sets of the, the, not the buzz controllers, but the... CNET ones or whatever se- it was? Yeah, I've got those, just in case one of them breaks down. I mean, if I can if I can get this stuff for like five to ten bucks, why not? Because it's just taking up fucking space. Whatever, it's fine. You know what, like, again, we're, we're not going to get into the, the I'll go. Right I'll go to Achievement Fest one day or something, and somebody will need something of this, and I'll be like, I have a spare. And how much will you pay for the Actually, luggage yeah. on that flight? I was going to say, I was going to say... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, he's, guys. He's have to ship, ship it over a month beforehand. There's, <laughs> there's some of this stuff that just people have to pay price, and I'm happy to send, but... Uh, all right. All right, well, with that, with that stunning battery chat, uh, let's. Uh, I think we're going to wrap up the show. Uh, if you want to get in contact with us, you can email us at hello at realgamerscore.com or on Twitter at realgamerscore. Camera manages our Twitter. Uh, so make sure you send him some abusive messages or some friendly hey, ones, you know. Hey, I mean, hey, 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 no more abusive messages. No, be nice, be nice, be nice to Cameron. Uh, this Discord, is a nice podcast. Discord.io slash RealGamerScore, as we previously mentioned, and Patreon.com slash RealGamerScore if you want to chuck us some cold hard cash so we can get some good mics and, you know, um, I, I promise we won't spend all of it on cocaine and hookers, mainly because the Patreon is so small that I don't even know who would show up and what quality the product would be. Uh, if you want to, we we bet it all on black, don't we? Y- yes, yes. No, yeah. we bet it all on double zero, like fucking <sighs> Adrian story. Um, yeah, well, they, they, to be fair, Adrian has the best luck of anyone I've ever met in my entire life. Okay, Wrong um, so I'm not, I'm not, so I'm not. Yeah, exactly. I'm not taking his experience as gospel. Uh, anyway, if you want to write, write us some questions, we'll answer them next week on the show. And um, if you want to be on the show as a guest, one of our community members, we always appreciate having them on. Um, because you know we uh, sometimes we do want to take a day off, and we do want to, and we also enjoy talking to our community. Um, so uh, message me um, or, or Cameron on um, probably on Discord is probably the best way to get hold of us. Saying that, uh, we've actually got a decent lineup of guests for the next month or so. Yeah, yep, absolutely. So yeah, so we we are having some more guests on. I mean, I, I say I say decent, but I mean like. Well, again, that that remains to be seen. Wait, um, wait till we get to next week. That's gonna yeah, be the do, fun do, one. There, there is a list of some people, we'll say. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're looking forward to that. Uh, and again, so if you want to be on the show, um, unless it's Brad, Brad, don't message me. I'm not putting <laughs> on the show. I'm joking. I'm joking. We'll we'll get, we're just gonna get a message now, just like if I can't be on the main one, can I yeah, be can on I, the movie <laughs> one? <laughs> but Brad knows about movies. That's the problem. We can't have that. All right. Um, if you want to get in, you know, if you want to help out the podcast, subscribe to us on your platform of choice. Uh, leave us a review. Tell your friends. Word of mouth, as always, is the biggest thing for us. Talk about any boosting session. I always mention that I'm recording whenever we do our shows because that's why I can't do boosting sessions. That's why I've got three messages now to say, hey, can you do this for me or help me with this? And I say, no, I'm trying to record this podcast. Give me five fucking minutes. All right? You dickheads. Uh, no, I love you all. Well, except for some of you. Um, if you want to get in contact with me... Uh, Neo Master on True Achievements, Xbox, Discord, uh, Carrier Pigeon, Morse Code, uh, Binary, maybe. Um, I, I'm, you know, I, uh, or otherwise, uh, you could probably find me in some of your database SQL queries, which I'm doing at the moment. Cameron. Okay. Um, you can find me on Twitter, uh, managing the Real Game Score. You can find me on Facebook under the Xbox Achievement Community. You can also find me on Discord, True Achievements, and possibly now that I have some time off, maybe back on Twitch. I do want to start streaming a little bit again, just to mess around with it. Um, cool. And same at the same time, I think we have some really good ideas lined up for the podcast over the next few weeks. So always tune in. Um, we got some feedback this week as well before I uh, finish up. Uh, lucky, uh, numer- uh, some number sequence after sent us a nice message on TA saying that he really appreciates the podcast. 
really likes uh, Brave for the Host. And then I think there was a quick comment before from JW8846. Great podcast. Matt I was very interesting last week and had some great stories. Uh, Neo is very enthusiastic and myself reminds him of a baby koala. <laughs> oh. I don't know how to take that. Am uh, well... I cute but deadly? Like, Cuba, cute with the chlamydia. I mean, look, I like I again. He's the one who said it, uh, so I'll have to ask him. Um, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't even. God damn it! <laughs> hey, hey, you brought it up. I was just gonna skate by it, but you were you were just like, hey, look, eucalyptus. And you just grabbed right at it. Uh, and uh, Alex, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, if people want to contact you, where can they find you? Easiest place is on Discord as Alex R Davies. But you can also find me, of course, on TA and Xbox, where my gaming tag is A1EXRD. Can't Beautiful. That? All right. Well, I think that's gonna. Yeah, dude. Let's let's go with Discord. That's yeah. Just just do that. That's, that's the best place to spam all of us. Really, just just add all of us with whatever inane bullshit you've got to come up with today. Uh, all right. Well, I think that's the end of the show. So, um, without for any further ado, we will catch you guys next week. <laughs>